Welcome to Touch Technology Review today. A quick response to a viewer inquiry on the channel. First of all, before I get into it, thanks very much for all of the viewers and all of the comments coming through. It's really great to see the interaction going on and it's always a privilege for me to be able to come back to you with more information wherever possible. I'll always do it in the comments and where possible, I'll also come back with a direct video response such as this one. The reason I chose this particular question is that I think it's a dilemma facing many of us now in 2019, and that is, which camera should I purchase? A smaller micro four thirds mirrorless, as you can see with the Olympus range, plus many others. There's the Fuji, which has, again, a nice compact camera that uses the APS-C format. There's the Sony A7 full frame mirrorless, there's now the Nikon and Canon mirrorless cameras and their traditional DSLR cameras. So there's such a huge range of cameras. It's very confusing as to which one you should purchase. Now, the first thing you need to do before making any acquisition of your equipment is to assess what your requirements are. Are you using it out in the field? Is it going to be used for travel, for street photography, etc.? In which case, the Micro Four Thirds is the ideal format. Now, people talk about the fact that the image sensor is smaller and therefore produces an inferior image. That's not always the case. You can still get a great quality image out of a Micro Four Thirds sensor. Certainly because it is smaller, you will notice more noise, particularly in the shadow areas. So if you're shooting low light photography, yes, there are some disadvantages in the Micro Four Thirds format. However, having said that, you can usually take care of these in post-production, so it's not a major issue. The quality is still exceptional, but it certainly won't match the image quality on a full-frame camera, whether it's mirrorless or the DSLR. So that brings us to the next option, which is whether we should consider a larger mirrorless camera, such as the Sony A7, or one of the new Canons or Nikon mirrorless range. Now these are slightly larger than the Micro Four Thirds and certainly smaller than the DSLR. So they're in between, they're quite lightweight, yet they're much bigger than this tiny mirrorless camera. So they're still well suited to travel, but not as much. And they do offer improvements in low light image quality. They will come at a higher price point as well. So you need to consider your budget there. And then finally, you need to think about whether you need to be looking at a DSLR. Now, the DSLR format is much heavier. It's the largest of all, unless of course you go to medium format. But the great thing about these DSLRs is at the moment in 2019, you still get access to the broadest range and the best range of lenses available at a quite a reasonable price point, whether you're shooting Canon, or Nikon or any other full frame camera. So the lenses available are great and you're not gonna be limited in any way. And you also tend to get better battery life out of these cameras. They tend to be ergonomically well designed and well suited to a professional shooter and all the options available on them are well designed and well catered towards shooting professional photography. So there are some advantages in going for this full frame format. It's starting to get quite heavy now, believe it or not, it packs in and it comes in at around two and a half to three kilos, this setup here, which is the base camera, the 5D, the camera grip and bat extra battery and an L series lens. So after using it all day, you can really get a lot of strain on your arms and it can become rather uncomfortable, which again is really one of the most important things you need to be thinking about when you're shooting. So in a studio environment, the weight doesn't bother me at all. It's usually on a tripod anyway. But when I'm out and about in the field, it certainly does become a consideration, which is why I've purchased the Micro Four Thirds format. It's my preferred choice when I'm out and about traveling. So if you have the budget, of course, you could consider multiple cameras, but if you're looking for one camera to perform every function that you require from your professional photography in a home or studio environment to location work, et cetera, then perhaps somewhere in between the small micro four thirds and full frame DSLR would be the full frame mirrorless format that comes in the form of the Sony or one of the brand new Nikon Z series cameras or Canon 
EOS R's. And one final thing I wanted to bring up was crop factor. Now, if you're shopping for anything other than a full frame DSLR camera, this is going to become a concept that you really need to familiarize yourself with. Now, the crop factor has to do with the ratio of the lens compared to the image sensor. So when you're purchasing a full frame camera, if you purchase a 50 millimeter lens, that 50 millimeter lens acts as you would expect with the 50 millimeter focal length, which is very much representative of the way our eye sees in reality. When you put a 50 millimeter lens on a micro four thirds camera, it has a crop factor of two times, which means that it magnifies the focal length of that lens by two, which essentially gives you a 100 millimeter portrait lens. When it comes to shooting in wide angle, you might be accustomed to shooting with a 16 millimeter wide angle lens on a DSLR. That 16 millimeter lens becomes 32 millimeters when you're shooting on micro four thirds. When you're shooting on APS-C, it has a crop factor of around 1.5, depending on which manufacturer. For example, if you're shooting on a 50 millimeter lens, and you're on an APS-C sensor, then that's going to be the equivalent of a 75 millimeter portrait lens. If you're shooting with a 16 millimeter lens on APS-C format, that will be the equivalent of around a 24 millimeter lens. So it still has wide angle capability, but it just won't be as wide as when you're shooting on full frame. So you need to be really aware of that difference when you're purchasing the lenses for the micro four thirds and APS-C format sensor cameras. That's a range of options for you. Certainly, if you've got any more questions and you're deliberating over a purchase and you wanna ask, feel free to put those questions in the comments box below and I'll see if I can get back to you. Hopefully that information was informative. Just a very quick overview of the differences between the format of cameras available to you now in 2019. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Bye for now.